program. Catch Polka Varieties next Sunday at 2 on TV5. The following special was videotaped Friday for presentation at this time. Somewhere there's music, I'll bring the tune. Somewhere there's heaven, I'll hide the I love that song. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's very nice. But you know what happens tonight, Fred? A new television station goes in there. They call it television. Why don't we listen to that and see what, what it's like? Okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll turn say? this off. This is it. This is what they call television. This is television station WBWS, your Scripps Howard station, first in Cleveland. At Aww. this very moment, <laughs> uh, 8 o'clock, December 17, 1947, the first television station in Ohio took the air. And the first program was the uh, Cleveland Press Christmas Party. It came live to the viewers, mm -hmm. just as we're coming to them live tonight from Stouffer's Inn on the Square. Well, actually, Fred, if I would have been born, I would have been watching from my crib. I was watching <laughs> from, you, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I was old enough to remember it, except I was in West Virginia. I was uh, studying philosophy. Were you? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, that's okay. You know, there was a wonderful party that was hosted on that first show. It was hosted by Jimmy Stewart. In fact, this is the little the brochure that went out in inviting everyone to watch television, yeah. something that was a newfangled mm -hmm. idea, yeah. they said. In fact, why don't we take a look back? It was a very exciting time. Uh, longer in its uh, infancy, well, TV5 today is a happy, healthy 35-year-old. And TV5's progress over those years has been visible to everyone. Not, not like you, huh, Harvey? Uh, what, what's that, Harvey? Uh, want me to shut up now and, and just watch the show? Oh, all right, Harvey. You know, there were only a few shows. There wasn't oh, a lot to look at in 1947, but those shows started to multiply. And uh, what we ought to do is look back now at some of those old shows All right. and some of the famous faces. Hello, it's the start of the show. We're set to go. Sit back with us and look through a special family album as we remember TV5, the first 35 years, with special guest appearances by Dick Clark, Ted Koppel, Merv Griffin, Marvin Hamlish, Phil Donahue, Phyllis Diller, and many more. And here we are with... Uh, Broadway babies singing for us there, and, and uh, look who's Vitch joined us, joined us. magically Mary, joined see us. You. See how television yes. has come along? <laughs> Hello and welcome. Good to have you here. Do you remember watching television when you were a child? Oh, yes, I remember it. I think the thing I remember most about WEWS was the test pattern. <laughs> <laughs> you Many liked, you liked our lighthouse, huh? It was always on too often. Yes. <laughs> Not enough television. You were always tuning your television <laughs> to make sure you had that in correctly for yourself. That's right. We want to make sure that it was just right. What things do you remember most about it, as it was, apart from the test pattern? Uh, <laughs> do you remember the kitty shows and uh, the no, Bosco? I, honestly, the thing I really remember most is Captain Video. Uh, really? Was that your favorite show? I think it was one that I watched every day, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was the big thing. We'd all gather around and watch Captain Video. <laughs> now, I don't want to ask your age, but people know it, basically. But you, I'm 46 you, years old, you were, I you were, <laughs> <laughs> So you were very, very young. Oh, I was, yes, very tender yes, years. <laughs> tender years, weren't we all, yes. <laughs> well, what, what do you think a television station is supposed to do for a community? Well, I think uh, basically to um, uh, do a good job of letting people know what's going on in the community. And also, Fred, uh, what you've tried to do, and that is boost the community to be a, a promoter of the community rather than someone just sitting back and taking shots at the community. That's right. And we do have a fine community here, in, indeed. It's nice to see so many people come downtown for an event such as this as well. Well, I'll tell you, I'm very grateful to WEWS uh, Channel 5 for the real boosting that they've done of the city of Cleveland during the last several years. I think that that's had a great deal to do with uh, people thinking more about their town than they have in the past. Actually, when you think about it, it's an easy town to promote. There are lots of good things happening here. I think so. <laughs> you have something there in your lap. Yes, I've got a proclamation here designating today as WEWS 35th anniversary day in the city of Cleveland. I'm really grateful for what you've done. Well, thank you, thank you very much for taking time and being here with us. And Mayor, you know we're going to hang that up. Pardon yes, me? We you will. know we're going to hang that one up. I hope thank so. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, you're welcome. Mayor George Voinovich, thanks Good to be so with much. You. Thank, thank you very, you. very much indeed. And there it is. That's what it looks like. There it is. Can you see that? Glad to have it. Thanks so much. Okay. 
You know, in the old days, everything was live, just as this is live. Paul Hodges was one of our very, very early people. And uh, he'd go out on 13th Street. That's where our station was in those early days. At 1.15, live in the afternoon, there was no tape, and he would interview folks on the street. And I'm told that people would actually go all the way down to 9th Street to avoid being on his show. And then he had another one, and it was called Dress and Guess, and he would put on his civvies, uh, you know, like, like his yes. shorts, and then he would put on clothes little by little, and somebody guessed what kind of a character he was. And then there was, of course, wrestling at the armory, at the armory. Lots there. of memories. Both now gone. Lots of memories are wrestling. probably, that's right, yeah. bringing back to people that are saying, I remember that. You know, too, you might remember some of the children's shows that were on at that time, whether it be Gene Autry, maybe Hopalong Cassidy was your favorite. How about Howdy Doody or Kukla, Fran, and Ollie? As a matter of fact, and later in the 50s, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie would be one of the first shows to be broadcast in color. The interesting thing about that is that absolutely no one could see those shows in color. And a man whose name I know is going to sound familiar to you, John Cameron Swayze. And he he's was still very ticking. famous then. <laughs> and he is still ticking. He's still around. <laughs> Why don't we take a look, if we can, right now at some of those early shows? Three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. We're going to rock. Trust abounding, no fossils or derisions, golden living dreams of visions, mystic crystal revelation, and the mind's true liberation of where we are. Unbelievable. You know, when we went on the air then, too, believe it or not, you know, with inflation and everything, commercials cost just $5. No one would advertise. We were on the air, no sponsors, no viewers. Why do you think that happened? I, th I, think, I think they decided to do it because there was something about the spirit of adventure. The war was over. Uh, the economy was set for that big run-up that was to last until yes. just fairly recently. Uh, president Truman was about to run for president on his own, and the age of technology was above us, just ready to roll. And there were very few televisions at that time, but, but the people who put this station on the air knew that the viewers would be there. Scripps Howard really got its start in the newspaper business way back in 1935. Uh, and they uh, decided to branch out, and, and Jack Howard, who was the son of Roy Howard, decided to start radio in 35, and then in 1947, uh, they started WEWS FM, and that came on the air just about a month before this television station did. And uh, Earl Keyes was one of the staff announcers at that time. He's Mr. Jingling now. You've seen him a thousand times. Court Stanton became our first staff announcer, and of course, Dorothy Fultheim. But television was just around the corner, and Scripps Howard took a chance, and WEWS went on the air in December of 47. You know, when you think back, too, a lot of those shows that you mentioned, a lot of the ones that I mentioned, were really for children, weren't they? Uncle Jake, Gene Carroll, and Captain Penny. And don't forget this, I have two things from the past. You know what that is? I didn't live in Cleveland in 1950. You don't know what that is? That's the Bosco Bear. That's the Bosco Bear, and this is Captain Penny's cap. Aha. Uh -huh. See that? Captain you know what Captain Penny. Penny always said, too, don't you? you? Do you know? Maybe at home you can say it along with us in it? case you happen to know. Ready? Ready? You can, you can fool, fool some, some of the people, people all of the time. time. All, all of the people, people some of the time. time but, but you can't, can't fool Mom. Because she's, she's pretty nice and she's and pretty, pretty smart. smart. And, and if, if you, you listen, listen to her, her you, you won't, won't go, go far.